Well, good morning. Thanks, Kevin. Hey, Kevin, um, my coffee's a little low here. Um, I'm not used to being here this early. Uh, anyway, I was super excited to be able to present uh, a quick webinar here on Better Educate. It is a dynamic tool for school leaders. And speaking of school leadership, uh, just coming uh, down from the high of connecting leaders in Nanaimo uh, on the weekend, it was just a fabulous uh, conference hosted by the BCPVPA and the uh, Island Regional chapters. Um, highlights for sure were um, our, our closing presenters, uh, Roy Henry Vickers and Candy Palmetter. If you were there, you know what I'm talking about. If you left early, um, you sure you sure missed uh, uh, an amazing presentation by Candy and she pulled everything together. And the other <clears throat> presenter who who really focused our thinking as, as leaders was uh, Simon Breakspear. And he did an opening keynote and then followed that with uh, some a practical breakout session and then a pull it together closing session. And we're going to sort of feature some of the things that Simon talked about in in his presentation at Connecting Leaders. But first of all, for this morning, let's take a quick look at our intended outcomes. Uh, we're going to provide a bit of a background for Better Educate for those of you that are, are new to the platform. Uh, how did we get here and why are we using it? A little bit of a provincial context around that. We'll take a look at what we know about quality leadership and adult learning. Um, there, you know, there's certainly some, some similarities, but also some differences between what we do with students, uh, children, and students who are adults. Uh, we'll tell a quick story about sharing and then We'll take you through the process of uh, the tool and, and, and shine a bit of a light on that powerful feature of networking. And we're gonna do all of that in 20 minutes, <laughs> a 90 minute presentation in 20 minutes. So I'll keep going, I did have a coffee. Uh, quick background info, the BCPPPA has uh, three, three pillars of purpose, that's how I refer to it, advocacy, representation, and leadership development. And in that context, um, our role as an organization is to support our members. And what we've been looking for is a way to do that that overcomes you know, a lot of the barriers that we face in our day to day, which which could be as simple as geography. You know, our, our friends and colleagues in the Stikine, of course, that's a district that's literally the size of France. And, and we have uh, half a dozen uh, members in the Stikine and they're challenged to get together. So how do they connect? How do they network? And, and Better Educate is a tool that supports that. The other sort of interesting um, um, reason for, for landing on Better Educate is in 2014, uh, there was the core government compensation review came to a close and we were moving out of the freeze for compensation, but there were some some initial sort of restrictions and and requirements around that move. And we were looking at uh, a functional tool that we could use day to day um, and, and something that wouldn't add to an already full role of responsibilities, full toolkit that that we experience in the day-to-day -day of being a principal or vice principal in our schools. And we wanted something that, you know, our, our supervisors, quite literally, uh, you know, colleagues at the, at the board office who are responsible for our performance uh, reviews and, and the accountability piece, we wanted something that would be friendly for them to use as well, that, that wouldn't be overwhelming. Um, and, and we landed on Better Educate. And, the last little bit for why Better Educate is in terms of our demographics across the province, we we are, well, I was going to say it, just roughly 40% of our uh, members are 50 plus. And, and that's from 2016 data. And our survey uh, for 2019 will be going out and, and I'm sure we're going to see um, some more information to support uh, our challenges around you know that how do we share that experience and wisdom and so better educates the tool that we're looking at so just a quick quick summary you know when we were looking at 2014 and and you know literally sort of driving driving the bus around performance review we looked at learning networks and what we know about learning networks in terms of their capacity to support and enhance um, learners, uh, especially adult learners. Um, and then we looked at a digital growth plan and, and we landed at Better Educate. Now, of course, Better Educate 
uh, is is a tool that is designed by one of our members, Sean Lockhart, and he designed it originally um, for a teacher to teacher support, and it, it fits really nicely. I like this quote from uh, Mr. Hattie. Uh, Everybody learns when a high impact leader creates a climate that supports learning. Learning is shared and critique isn't just tolerated, but welcome. So bettereducate.com uh, is the website that we'll be using. It is a dynamic resource sharing and collaboration platform uh, for educators, school leaders, and the communities that they lead. The community could be a school, it, it could be a municipality or a district classroom. Um, so communities by definition can be quite diverse. Um, I like this quote as well. Leadership effects on student learning occur largely because the leadership strengthens that professional community. A teacher's engagement in professional community in turn fosters the use of instructional practices that are associated with student achievement. So that research uh, really supports the use of a network and a tool that uh, supports professional growth. So when it comes to leadership and education, it's safe to say uh, that we know what works. And after our weekend with, with Simon Breakspear in, in, in Nanaimo at Connecting Leaders, we, we, we have a, a really a, a nice set of tools with what works, but how do we access that? if we live in a remote center? How, how do we share what works with others and how do we connect with what works? Well, that's what we're gonna talk about today. So our BCPVPA membership has access to a meaningful growth plan module that's embedded in Better Educate. It's one that's designed uh, essentially by our organization and our organization is a ref direct reflection, it is, the BC principles and vice principles. And so in the context of using our professional learning standards as, as the lens through which we look at our growth plans, our membership are able to uh, approach their growth through a network and through a sharing model. Uh, membership has its privileges. And so uh, through, through uh, uh, connection to the BC PVPA, all of our over 2,500 members have access to the growth plan module. Uh, quite often our, so, so this year for sure, 2017-18, our pro D reps, uh, Liz and Jess, have been introducing members in different contexts to the Better Educate tool. And, and often that happens in a face-to-face -face process, but we can do that same thing uh, using a digital, a digital structure as well. Um, just, just really quickly, I wanted to remind folks about adult learners and, and how we are directly involved um, in our own learning and, and why. Um, you know, in, in a lot of ways, it, it's about controlling the learning. Um, we want to be engaged in learning that's a reflection of, of who we are, and quite often our experiences guide that. Sometimes our experiences are positive, sometimes they're negative. You know, I don't want to dwell on negative, but if we have a bad experience with something, um, you know, using a whiteboard tool, uh, a technology, sometimes that'll, you know, jade us for a while. But it's it's just a fact that experiences are, are a big part of adult learners' motivations, and motivations are a key piece. So when we look at uh, the adult learner, we want to we wanna differentiate between our leadership role and our learner role uh, quite often. Um, you know that's that's a hard a hard hat to to take off for a little while to adapt to adopt a learner attitude and that's important to think about as you head into experiences where you're going to be working on professional growth. Uh, there's a confidence piece. Um, you know we we have that sort of uh, Simon Breakspear would say the plateau of expertise. We get comfortable and confident in our expertise, but but there's a plateau effect as well. And then, of course, demographics and speed of depth. Um, so right now, I'd, I'd like to just take you through a quick story about sharing collaboration and the process of developing a meaningful growth plan. And I'm gonna do this with a fictional character. Um, I call her Talia. And Talia Demo is a new vice principal. She's been a vice principal in rural BC, and she's been at the job for a year, but she does have six years of teaching experience and she's passionate about inquiry, 
agile learning and leadership. So when Talia looks at professional growth, um, like all of us in, in our roles as principals and vice principals, her days are short and her to-do to lists are very long. She'll use Pinterest, websites, Twitter, other, other technologies and Better Educate to explore opportunities to grow professionally. And as I was mentioning, um, she also connected with a bunch of colleagues at Connecting Leaders 2018. 2018 in Nanaimo. Handy for the webinar. <laughs> uh, at Connecting Leaders, um, Talia uh, had the opportunity to um, engage with the learning that Simon Breakspear uh, was leading, and um, that really resonated with her. So in that in that context, um, this is an example of where the experience that she's having in Nanaimo may not be one that a colleague of hers could have uh, participated in. So how does that colleague access? How does Talia share some of that learning with her colleague? Well, we're going to go through that process. So one of the things that Simon talked about was agile learning and, and taking tiny steps. Now, Simon is an internationally known presenter. Um, he is the executive director of Agile Schools, um, and he would tell you uh, without hesitation that he is a researcher first and a presenter second. I, I think it's a close second because he's a very dynamic presenter, and I've enjoyed being in the audience on a number of occasions when he's presenting. But let's just go through uh, one of the key steps that Talia would undertake once she's either returned home or maybe has found uh, a a pause in the day uh, while she's at the conference. This is the, the dashboard and for Better Educate. And up in the right-hand corner here is, is where we'll find some of the tools. Some of the tools are across the top right as well. And uh, over on the left-hand side, we've got some tab tools that allow us to navigate through the platform. Um, what you're looking at is a, a link uh, over on the left-hand side to the BCPVPA website to access other resources directly. We've got some pins to uh, some instructional video series that Kevin Reimer uh, has done and a webinar that Kevin and Sean have done as well. And then over on the right, um, customizable for sure, there's there's the BCPVPA Twitter, uh, Twitter feed. So let's just take a quick look here at uh, Talia's resources. So we're going to use the editor. And when we look at Talia's resources, we can see that she's got four resources. The one on the left is uh, shaded pink. That's an indication that she's still editing that and still working on it. So she's come back to this resource to continue the process of editing. So this is a, a little description that she's typed up for her experience uh, at Connecting Leaders. And she's found a couple of video links that Simon has shared. Here's another one and I'll just type it in here and uh, shows you how quickly the information loads. So a second video and this one is about uh, an, an introduction to learning sprints. And we'll just put it as the first one that people will see. So we're adding uh, video links to the resource. And if you think of the resource as a, as, as sort of a unit plan for leadership <laughs> uh, or, or uh, learning, I guess. Uh, we can add some photos. And so Talia is adding some, some images that resonated while she was in in the audience of the conference. And then Simon referenced uh, a couple of articles that he has written over uh, time, one that he he co-wrote with uh, David Istance and, oh, sorry, Amelia Peterson, actually, this is Amelia. And, and now we're ready to publish. Now, Talia belongs to a couple of different uh, groups. Now, as a, as a user, you can create your own group or others can um, invite you to a group. And here we go. So we now have four resources. Um, 
that Talia has produced. And we'll go take a look. So this is what it would look like. And this is open for anyone to see when we click on it. This is the breakdown. And you can see that Talia created it. There's the videos. Now the videos can play directly within the platform or you can expand it and go full screen. And so, you know, if, if you're creating a resource to share at a staff meeting, um, then all of your information is sitting right there for you and you can uh, hit play and go full screen for your staff. So now that Talia has created this resource, I'm going to show you something that has me super excited. Uh, this is a very new addition to uh, the platform and uh, a big shout out to Adam Debray for, for creating this capacity. So right now, Talia has uh, created a resource. It's all finished. What if she knew that there were some colleagues at Connecting Leaders who were also part of uh, in the audience? And, and may have other um, insights, perspectives to share with this development of uh, an agile leadership resource. Talia can invite editors and it's as easy as clicking on the green button. And then you can see that select members to allow to edit. I'm gonna start with a first name. So we'll go with Patrick, because Patrick Kinghorn. A uh, good friend and colleague was at the conference, and he's there as a part of the committee for uh, next year, 2019, in Penticton, and Chris Horton. So I started typing there uh, his last name, and then G-R-A-N, we get a first name grant and a last name grant. So Heidi Grant is a friend and colleague who is also a director. And so I'm going to add those members to this list, and an invitation has been sent to those three principals and they will receive an email from Talia that invites them to edit her Agile Leadership resource. And now it shows on the resource who the contributors are to this resource. And I think that is super cool. It, it, it totally demonstrates the power of networking and collaboration. So now that we've got this developing resource, Let's go back to one of those reasons to um, engage in, in the Better Educate platform, and that's the growth plan structure. So if Talia goes back up to her, her module section, clicks there on the right hand side in the middle line are her growth plans. So if she clicks on growth plan and again um, with membership comes access to the BCP VPA growth plan and it is based on uh, our learning standards. Uh, one of the things that you can do is copy a current growth plan, uh, relabel it, and you know um, change the timeline if you like. But the power of that is, um, when you think about it, you're you're never restarting your growth. You're you're working forward from it. If I wanted to share my growth plan, so Talia would share it with me. I would just type in the name of a colleague that uh, I would want to share it with. I'm just going to hit pause here and tell you that she's typing. So one of, one of the things that a lot of our members are doing now is they're creating two growth plans at the same time. One of the growth plans they'll use for specifically their initial self-assessment. And what that lets them do is, is power through um, the, the, the standards and give themselves a quick uh, really familiarize themselves with them and then sort of give them a self-assessment with a, a simple uh, score from one to five. And then they'll create a second growth plan. And that's the growth plan that they'll use to work and develop in a certain um, domain area or a leadership standard area. And that's the one that they would share with a colleague or, or a supervisor. I'll show you how to do that. Um, uh, so, like most growth plans, you would you would put in your personal, professional purposes and, and vision, your values and beliefs, which are so important. Um, they're the lens with which uh, we we do our work. Um, once you've gone through a process of a self assessment uh, with a peer or a supervisor, you can make some notes about areas that you would continue to work on. 
some some districts, uh, some some chapter reps have told us that they use um, a different growth plan template, and and you can literally upload that document if it's a Word or or PDF document. Um, if you've never gone through the self-assessment, these instructions just outline uh, very quickly. You know, one is a developing. Um, you're, you feel as though you're developing in an area, and five would be accomplished. Uh, I'm sure you could, you know, use your own criteria, descriptions, and definitions um, for the scale. So Tally is looking at uh, a, a, the standard three supervision for learning, and specifically an area where her experiences with uh, Simon um, would fit. And when you look at the layout for the growth plan, you can see the action statements, and then you can see the reflective question. And so for a lot of our members, just familiarizing themselves uh, through the use of the reflective questions is a, is a, good, uh, a good starting point. And at this stage, Telly has done that, and she is going to add a file. And let's let's use let's look at uh, collaborative learning activities. And so she clicks add a file, and here's the list of her her resources, resources that she's created, or resources that she's bundled. Now we won't go through the bundle process; we don't really have time today, um, but. A bundling process allows you to find resources that other principals or vice principals have created and shared, and you will pull those into your um, into into your platform. That's not the right word, but you have access to them. So what she's done is added her agile learning and leadership resource to her growth plan. She's going to self-assess, give herself four to five. And right away, you can see the tool actually tabulates the totals. Uh, one, uh, it demonstrates that there's there's evidence in the growth plan for a specific standard. And then there's that little uh, developing score piece that, that you can control as well. Okay. So that's the process of adding evidence to the growth plan. Now, this is a really exciting feature. Um, this is very, very new. We, I, uh, I'm not 100% sure if it's available just yet, um, but I'm going to demonstrate it. Talia has access, so lucky Talia. This is uh, a new feature, the school growth plan, a uh, school plan, sorry. And if we click on Talia's tool platform there, so school plans are something that we all work with. And kind of like the growth plan, you can label your school plan. And again, um, you know, what year, what's your timeline? And then looks uh, visually looks a fair bit like the growth plan. And again, you can start a school plan this year uh, work through uh, an aspect and then you can use it as the template as the starting point for next year's school plan and similarly uh, you can share your school plan with colleagues with uh, supervisors if it you know if it's a district staff member who who works with with principals and vice principals on school plans you can share that with them uh, I, and I'm sure down the road, it's something that, uh, you, you know, you could share it with your school community, uh, PAC, uh, and we're not quite there yet, but just demonstrating right now how you can add evidence um, to the school plan. So if, if you're comfortable with the use of some digital uh, tools like, you know, uh, literally photos of of things happening in your school or video, you can quickly and easily add that evidence to a school plan. Uh, Telly is adding a great to great transition data that you can um, find your district, find your school um, from uh, the provincial website. She's created a resource around that and she's just picked that resource and dropped it right into her school plan 
um, that would be part of number three, what evidence supports what we know about our learners. So that scanning process. And as you can see, you know, there's a comprehensive structure there. Uh, this is a starting point and we're just sort of um, demoing it this morning as a, as a bit of a teaser for sure. But um, certainly the, the promise of networking within our school and our school district and our school communities um, it, 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 instead of having um, to find huge amounts of time to do that, this is something that can happen, you know, daily and drop it, pick it up again next week uh, when some some purposeful events are planned and they're finished and you've got a, a picture or a video or a document that you went through with your staff or your, or your uh, collaboration teams. You can quickly and easily add that evidence into your school plan. So super excited about that. So school plans uh, coming to a Better Educate uh, dashboard soon. And so the last little bit uh, for our intended outcomes today was just the power of networking. And so here's another fictional character, Brad. Brad's a vice principal. And he's in Talia's neighbor, uh, in uh, Talia's district and at a neighboring school. So he follows Talia on Better Educate. So just like the other um, sort of social media platforms, Better Educate has the capacity uh, to allow users to follow each other, and which is a great feature. And when you share similar interests professionally with a colleague, it, it makes it you know, a, a cool experience because when when Brad posts something, Talia would see it and vice versa. So in terms of the power of sharing, Talia posted her new Agile Leadership resource. If she hadn't um, sort of tapped uh, Brad by adding him as an editor, he would still receive a notification that that resource was posted and he can like it. You know, that's like uh, one of those other famous social media tools. Uh, he could favorite it uh, or he can bundle that resource. When he favorites it, what it does is it that's a filtering process. So when he goes into his own resources, he can just select those that he's favorited. And instead of sort of having to scroll through hundreds, literally, of resources that are now on Better Educate, he can just look at his favorites. Uh, along the way, he's learning. He's implementing best practices, and of course, he's growing professionally. If he bundled that agile uh, learning leadership resource and then added it to his own growth plan, he's also um, providing evidence of that growth. And then, of course, the power of networking and sharing, bettereducate.com, lets his followers know that he's bundled a resource, and, and if... If they, if they know Brad and if they're following him, they'll be interested in looking at what that resource is. So instead of getting lost in the sort of rabbit hole of, of searching through Twitter, um, you get a notification from somebody who you trust and somebody who has similar interests in terms of growing professionally. Um, so the last little bit. So using our, our vice principal character, Talia, we can now have a, I, I think, have a, a much better appreciation for how she can upload and share a resource. She can invite colleagues to edit and collaborate around that resource. She can add that resource to her growth plan as an evidence piece. And soon uh, members will be able to add the resource to their school plan. And I think you can have appreciation for the power of networks. And that's it. I think we have some questions. All right. Thank you, Dave, for a quick overview of Better Educate. I'm sure um, uh, as I look at the uh, our attendees, I think many of you have Better Educate accounts already. If you don't have one um, or if it's not active, you can reach out to Sean Lockhart or David to set up an account for yourself. Um, while uh, David and I uh, talk a little bit more about Better Educate, there's still an opportunity for you to put questions in the question box. If you're interested, we'll take all questions at this time. Um, I think we're both curious in terms of some, perhaps some immediate feedback in terms of 
the flow of Better Educate and, and anything that you are noticing um, in terms of some suggestions you might have to make it a, a, a little more user friendly, although it's quite user friendly right now. Um, you may notice also that uh, more recently we uh, there used to be a uh, link for logging in and setting up an account. We're restricting that a little bit right now um, in terms of just uh, making sure that our, our members only have access to Better Educate, but we have some thoughts um, in terms of reaching out to districts to make sure that both principals and vice principals have access to it and teachers, uh, your teachers have access to it as well. Um, the teachers have opportunities uh, to participate in the full resource sharing as do BCPVPA members, but BCPV, BCPVPA members only have access to the growth plan, personal growth plan and the school growth plan as well too. That's not for um, teachers. Um, so I have one question. Are there any concerns with having student school data linked to our personal sites? Um, if if the data is uh, so like the, the data that I just demonstrated, it was the grade to grade transition. So that's public accessible data um, in terms of uh, data that uses student names and that information. Um, I'm, I'm always um, hesitant to use that in a public setting for sure. Uh, so I, I don't have that. I, I don't have a, the right perfect answer for that. I think that would be a district conversation. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, did, I don't know if I answered that <laughs> the best way, but, uh, if, if, if you're using, um, FOIP protected data, you know, that, that would be uh, your discretion for sure, um, because at the end of the day, you are sharing it. And then if you're sharing it with somebody else who doesn't have the same sensitivities that you might have, you may want to think about that. So I'm always hesitant to, to share specifically you know, student FOIP data for sure. Uh, one other thing I'll mention, we are giving superintendents and assistant superintendents access to the site. Um, for the growth plan piece. And so with 60 different districts, there's 60 different compensation models. Um, it's been a little um, inconsistent as principals and vice principals move through level A, but as we start to move through level B and level C, it's going to be very clear that there has to be some performance review um, piece assigned to that as part of the process for assigning whatever salary enhancements principals and vice principals are eligible for. 60 different districts with 60 different approaches. We, we really would like to see as many districts as possible land on um, the growth plan tool within Better Educate. We just think that it, 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 it's a more comprehensive process and informs growth perhaps a little better way than many of the evaluative processes that are in districts. However, if you, um, if you are interested in having your uh, senior leader have access to Better Educate, um, reach out to myself or David and we'll make sure that's available. Um, just uh, one comment on the question, if, uh, if it's around the data question, if it's data that's already publicly accessible, it's, it's very low risk, low risk for sharing. So wouldn't have to necessarily worry about those concerns. Um, all right. So as I mentioned at the start of our uh, at the start of our um, webinar today, I will send out the slide deck um, for our members. We have recorded the webinar. I'll post it on the YouTube channel, um, likely sometime next week. So um, for any of our members who weren't able to participate this morning, they will have access to it. Um, and seeing that there are no other questions, um, I will bring it to a close. Do you want to? Do you have a final comment? David? Yeah, I, I know there's a broad range of um, sort of technology comfort or expertise. If th this this was probably a pretty high level um, demonstration of, of the power of the tool with an emphasis on the sharing and the networking aspects. Uh, if, if somebody's interested in, in a more sort of nuts and bolts, how do I log in? How do I, you know, um, maneuver through the platform and, and navigate those bits and pieces, please don't hesitate to reach out because we've got some other 
uh, resources and you can find them on the dashboard, uh, the intro to the tool, uh, they're pinned on the BCP BPA dashboard. Um, but, but definitely feel free to reach out because um, this, the support through this process is something that I'm definitely uh, willing to do and, and happy to do. Uh, with that, we're going to bring our webinar to a close. Thank you much, uh, very much to David for sharing his expertise on this. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.